Welcome to This Week in Hospitality Marketing, the podcast show number 301 with your host, Lauren Gray. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hospitality Marketing, the podcast. I'm your host, Lauren Gray, and this is episode number 301. So each week we spend around 20 to 30 minutes sharing the most interesting tools, news, and techniques being used in marketing for the hospitality industry. We also do a quick recap of our weekly live video show This Week in Hospitality Marketing, which also airs every Friday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern U.S. time, as well as our Clubhouse Room Hospitality Marketing, which also runs every day Monday through Friday, or excuse me, Monday through Thursday at noon as well. So with that, let's get started. And now, today's new resource tool. So our tools for review this week, and I almost kind of wish that this podcast might get buried in with the other podcasts because it's fulfilling a promise that I have in the mission of this podcast, but also I'm really um, letting in you in on some amazing stuff that's working very well for us right now that is very much on the front edge of things, and that is OTT advertising, rich media advertising, channel development, uh, broadcasting. We've touched on some tools in relationship to all variations of this, but I want to talk specifically about three tools that I use specifically for video advertising. Um, The first will be the obvious. The first will be YouTube. Um, Obviously, it is the second largest search channel in uh, the world. Uh, As such, it's also uh, massively used, as we all know. Uh, And from it, there is a massive amount of advertisement. And if you haven't noticed recently, if you're not a YouTube user on general terms, a tremendous amount of ads are just infusing themselves on all videos at this point. Uh, Google's really leaned into placing ads just about everywhere. It used to be if you were watching videos of uh, less popular video pieces or personal video pieces, um, ads were not present. But it seems that almost every player, even if it's just a a video that you're sharing that only has dozens of people following it, there's a pre-roll or post-roll, depending upon the targeting that has been designated by the advertiser. I don't know how far this will continue on, whether it gets abusive to that point where Google is really leaning into pushing the pay-for-less-commercials component of this, but they are truly saturating their platform with a tremendous amount of advertising. That's the negative. The positive is that could be you. The targeting capabilities on YouTube are extreme. There's geography, demography, time of day, There's interest, categorizations, a lot of tremendously excellent filters that can help make sure your content relative to the video content itself as designated shows up, whether it's by the regionality of where they're located or whether it's the interest category, the content specific to the video. All these are tools. This puts you in front of people. Now, we have in previous podcasts, last week's being one of them even, talked about editing tools and functionalities to create the content you need to use for advertising. So this isn't the first step process. This is what you do with what we've talked about before. How do you do this? Well, we have to create rich media. Now, we know that there is rich media creation tools all over the place. We've talked about several of them on this podcast, on our live show, on our clubhouse conversations. Um, And it's for what you would be using it for designates the best tool to use for it. If you're doing animated ads, if you're doing motion ads, if you're doing uh, cinematograph ads, if you're just looking at static ads, um, uh, meme ads, whatever, all of them have different formatting requirements based on the platform you're putting them on. YouTube, you're not, you're going to need a longer duration and more of a TV-esque video. Uh, something that lasts 15 seconds, five seconds, what have you, 30 seconds. It isn't just your animation still image ad that often goes in there. Uh, there's also a tremendous amount of variations of ads that you can place on YouTube, whether it's, it's pre-roll, mid-roll, break roll, uh, lower third, uh, drop over, call to action. There's lots of variations to this. And if these terms don't uh, make sense to you, they would if you get into the space. But also as a caveat, don't jump into the space until you do understand what those terms mean as well because you can easily spend a lot of money on things that aren't as productive. So YouTube uh, as a tool is one tool. Another one I like to talk about is Foundy. Foundy is a retargeting tool that is absolutely el primo and when it comes to what it's capable of doing for rich media. This allows for a tremendous amount of placement with on websites that are content specific to what you're looking to do, interest specific. It allows for videography to be placed in certain places and positions. It's an incredibly useful tool for placing and retargeting based on targeting information. Now, we have talked about first party and third party cookie changes in the world, uh, third party being the, the negative 
negative, first party being the positive. Um, and from that, FoundD will be an incredibly useful tool based on the direct ad uh, information that you have in a first party cookie way as to the ability to target people. If you know what it is that we're looking for on your platform, it helps you retarget them on other platforms that are offering ad space availability. So Foundy, F-O-U-N-D dot E-E, uh, is a wickedly excellent tool for that. The primo tool of discussion today, and I think that's my catch buzz of phrase of the day, is Brandzuka.com. Brandzuka allows for what's truly called OTT advertising, over the top advertising. We know, especially through COVID at this point, that a lot of channels are now mainstream functions of uh, entertainment. Disney Plus, Paramount Plus, The Peacock, uh, Amazon Prime, uh, Google TV, uh, Sling TV, um, Fubo, uh, Tubi. These are all platforms that offer uh, massive amounts of content. Now, we've talked about broadcasting your own channels, but skipping that is the ability to advertise on these OTT channels or uh, to advertise as OTT on these channels. As with anything, it used to be very early on that the only channels you could really truly selectively pick were even just regionally based, and that was sports channels mainly associated with Fox and ESPN. That has certainly become more robust. Uh, I have had the privilege of working a little bit with the Hulu beta on their uh, video advertisement capabilities on the Hulu channel format. The demographic filtering selection on that platform is amazing. Demographic interest, time of day, content, subject, um, lead as to where they come from to where they might be going to. Um, tremendous amount of information. Now, if you're not familiar with where these ads go, it's that space that when you're watching a program on one of these platforms, say uh, a Netflix or, or, or a Hulu, and it says commercial in progress and just plays background image, that's a lost revenue opportunity for that channel that you could have bought to show up for the people that were watching that program based on the filters that you decided on. Uh, their age, their family status, the time of day, the type of programming content, and a host of other things that you can choose from. Uh, your ad could show up for them. Again, with the caveat being that you have the content that is of the caliber, that is of the duration and all the requirements that the platform requires that would be used to make sure your ad gets placed at that time. And of course, call to actions and so forth. The really cool part about OTT advertising at this point is the ability to also add in QR codes for uh, a call to action, which you didn't have that availability for because you didn't have the interaction capability of the commercial. So from that, there's some really cool things to do. So those are our three tools this week. Brandzuka.com, Foundy, which is found.ee, and of course, YouTube uh, TV advertising, uh, or YouTube advertising in general, where it doesn't have to be just their TV. And that is our tools for review. Now, for this week's hospitality technique. So our technique this week, as always, related to our tools, is being seen, leading visually in OTT and rich media. Of course, we gave away a few of the nuances of what the tool's functionality is in relationship to this, but this is a core discussion of future tense. We have progressed, as we always do with the technology and our interaction with it, as to a value proposition of what we are providing. I'm not going to go back into the history of the internet, but let's say that blogs had a value at a certain time that has transitioned into their current value. Their current value is wonderful for indexing and content sharing and the ability to show up correctly for the new world of Google zero clicks or answer boxes that by your produ producing relevant content specific to long tail or multi word searches, you turn into relevancy by being put into this answer box that Google is providing that's basically taking 60% plus of the overall web search traffic, not going to a website other than just going to the answer box, which hopefully you would be. So even though you are may, maybe the most specific website organically for the relevant search that somebody may have queried in, they may not make it past the answer box, the Google supplied information, and the paid platform positionings before you to get to your organic listing that was well optimized. So your next best thing, actually your better thing, is to be relevant to the search that Google will take from your website and put it into the answer box. With that, that's where value of content and distribution in the, net, in the nuts and bolts and block and tackle of web, proper web design and proper navigation and proper content and proper schema and all that things that we talk about 
comes the new generation of things. What's the new blog, so to speak? What is the things that people interact with more and better and, and more preferred? And video and rich media are it. As we have increased our net technology bandwidth capabilities, that downloading a video of a cat playing a piano doesn't take two minutes before you can play it. It is instantaneous. As a matter of fact, if we spend more than four seconds, we lose almost 100% of our traffic to our site. That's how fast we're used to getting things now. So because of that, Videography is an easier medium in which to distribute on the internet, which is mobile. Mobile is the dominant force of internet. So in addition to it being mobile centric, in addition to it being in search engine world, Google answer box or Google zero or Google zero click, um, you are providing content that is interactive and video and rich media is the way to go. We also are not worried about an antenna sitting on top of our houses anymore getting TV that's locally broadcast. I say that even though I have an antenna over my house because free local TV is great because a lot of the online offer services, including cable services, charge for local TVs as their negotiated contracts to be shown to you via their medium. And we know that cable has been and used to be the main thing. Uh, and then it would turn into satellite, direct TV, dish TV, so forth and so on. And it has transitioned even from that into the world of online. Internet feeds all. Internet feeds our entertainment media visually, audibly, and also communication wise. It, uh, when we do things now where we are at home now, our concern is more about not signal strength of our antenna, but our ability to get proper speed for our internet. That is our, our channel, our pipeline of conduit of information and, and data. So because of that rich media videos and, and video ads and video dialogue are a mainstream component of our how we consume media now. And a lot of players that did not have an ABC, CBS, NBC or Fox channel broadcasting local stations have to carry them, local stations have to be created to be representing them medium. We instead can go online, get Disney Plus and watch Cinderella because it's online and it's a great 4K quality and it's on our big super 80 inch TVs and we get to enjoy it and we get to pause it and replay it and it has all the extra stuff that comes along with that and it's not vhs tapes and dvds and blu-rays it's all gone it's all just the internet now this is how we consume so being in that medium is critical for our future marketing success you've done all your website stuff you've done all your videography and photography and all your content development for your website and your organic optimization as i said schema and all the rest of it and it is sitting somewhere down on the bottom of the ladders that hopefully people will get to the old old page two mentality it's there but nobody's looking at it because it's too far beyond all the other stuff that people are engaging with by doing ott advertising by doing videography and doing those kinds of rich media engagements you're re-establishing yourself on the top of the dialogue with people most interested in seeing you in the medium that they're most interested in being exposed in video is the way to go and it has become more and more affordable not just in the advertising but in its production we've talked about it on previous podcasts it is the avenue of opportunity for so many aspects of our business restaurants hotels golfing spa you name it every one of them the benefit of what rich media can provide them in the advertisement space within them on ott and beyond is profound it is something that i'm a champion of with the caveat being that all things else have been done already that need to be done and that you have the medium and the capability of producing the content that truly represents you in a positive and consistent way. So with that, that is our technique of the week, being seen, leading visually in OTT and in rich media. Now, this week's hospitality news that you should know. So our news and show review, we had a small co-hosting audience uh, group today. Uh, it was fun. Uh, we had Dean Schmidt with Basecamp Metamed Search Marketing. We had Adele Gutman with uh, Reputation Management and uh, AdeleGutman.com. Um, and it was a fun, great open dialogue. I carried over the fact that I had had the privilege of speaking on HSMAI's live show that they do each week Tuesdays at 2 o'clock Central European time. Uh, or excuse me, 1 o'clock Central European time, um, where I had the uh, discussion of EU, uh, European travel variations to U.S. travel variations perceptions and differences uh it was a fascinating conversation i got to have uh, where we, we were able to really point out the fact that as a brand driven industry here in domestic united states 
That is not the case in the European community. It's not that they don't have brands, but they're not the dominant powerhouses uh, representation as they are in domestic U.S. Marriott and Hilton and uh, IHG do have hotels over there, but they aren't the guiding marketing force. There's ownership groups that have a variety of brands, them included, and also Golden Tulip and a, a variety of others uh, that allow for a dilution of the impact of what brands do. Because of that, too, is also the dynamic of the European community hotels being very centric on wholesaler relationships. Uh, my wife being from Europe, uh, when we went visit over, we, I was always impressed with any town had a central travel agency. It used to be Cook. We know where it happened with them, uh, but others as well, uh, where that was what you did for planning your holiday. You went there and created the plan. Everything was there. Racks of brochures still, even though the internet was a thing because keep in mind the european community uh phones you still had to pay by the minute for a long time when we still had phone access in general uh, internet had to be paid by what data you used so it was very limited as to what people used it for because it cost them money so traditional media was still the powerhouse in the european community only in recent years has it transitioned into the same economics that we have which is internet is a provided flatline service same too with phones on and on and on um so they get used more the way we use them but still those old ways remain and travel agents are a key element to the process of their travel discovery and travel research and travel bookings but with covid that changed and uh, also you know cook closing its doors and so forth changes that to change the players in that field as well and what we were talking about on the show was uh, a, a, a strange new world that hotels in the European community are facing of all this direct channel business they don't know what to do with. Their websites weren't designed, built, and have content that is relevant to direct channel bookings. They were subjugate to what was being offered to them by other channels where other people brought them business. Their infrastructure of their operations at hotels do not include an active component into their marketing strategy for direct channel and for anything else. They may have an influence into their revenue strategy, but that's a tertiary relationship, not a direct relationship. They tended to be gatekeepers as to what rates were being offered and by whom and by how and how they mitigated demand, but not really from an aggressive acquisition point of view. So it was a fast fascinating conversation between what they're facing and unfortunately the negativity of this is their easy reliance or growth reliance on third parties like hotels.com which is the dominant ota in their market because ota they're basically they're saying who can give us business and hotels going oh i can and they're filling a lot of that wholesaler void that's dormant right now because of furloughs and reductions of um um people that are needing to be working at the time because travel is not allowed because they have much more restrictive travel obligations in the European community than we do here. And as such, they don't have the opportunity to travel. Of course, with international travel being locked down, that even closes it down more. More Europeans travel internationally than U.S. citizens travel. So, uh, and then also considering that the European community is a cluster of countries, you're always traveling, quote, internationally anyway. And unlike our marketing strategy where we look, oh, drive travel, domestic travel, that doesn't really exist, not just because of the fetteredness of their restrictions due to COVID, but also, as my, my co-host was talking about, you know, people in Portugal don't stay at Portugal hotel, Portuguese hotels. They go to France, they go to Spain, they go to other places. And since the borders are closed, that means that business doesn't exist. So the strategies are very different from it. Also different was our discussion of labor demands, where we are dealing with what was the labor shortage prior to COVID and now an extreme labor drought post-COVID, or not, I wouldn't say optimistically post-COVID, but transitionally COVID at this point, where we're just not getting the resources of people that we need. A lot of people have left the industry, not coming back. They find better opportunities outside of our industry. They're taking their skills that they learned in our industry and transferring it to new skills in new industries. And we're facing this massive la uh, lack of people coming back to our industry to work in the european community they always had a relatively high unemployment ratio in comparison to us so because of that they feel very strongly that they'll be able to get back the people once they're allowed to work that they lost due to the fact that they had to close down from work so different metrics in relationship to that uh, we did also discuss staff retention and surveys how to engage with people and engage with your teams as to understand what it is that needs to be done to resolve internalized issues so that better guest service could be made um, we also talked about the polarity of need of accommodations between uh, resort and destination um, uh, strategies versus those of roadside, more functionalities of accommodations aspect of it as well. So we had lots of fun. As usual, it ran two hours plus. 
which is always fun because we get to kind of chase down different topics and ganderings. Um, we always, of course, we will have uh, information that we share with the links and so forth on this podcast and also on the uh, links I'll be sharing with you in a little bit. But I do want to isolate one article that was in uh, Robert Cole's uh, Rock Cheetah's news list that he gives us each week, a wonderfully curated list. Um, you can sign up for free by going to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash Rock Cheetah, all lowercase, no space. Uh, there you sign up. He has a wonderful curated list based on segmentations of categories and so forth. But one article caught my eye from hotelmanagement.net, and that was the five things to ask from a CVB. Uh, I thought it interesting, given especially also the respect that I have for um, um, Stuart Butler, who has moved into the CVB space, and as such, uh, um, very much it will be a person that influences these types of things, uh, where he no longer gets to be the outside entity pointing at the CVB for their lack of efforts. He's now the responsible one to make sure those efforts are realized. The five aspects I agree with, I don't think that they're actually truly the top five, but I believe that they are five that should be focused on. The number one uh, thing that you should ask of your CBB to help with is promote the attractiveness of the destination. It is their duty, their, literally their charter to do this. Uh, sometimes CVBs get very much caught into the politics of relationships and accountability and tracking analytics and verification of their existence and validation of their contribution that they lose sight of the true focus being regardless of those things, although validating as they may be, their real value proposition of existence is what can they do to make sure that people are aware of the value of the destination they represent? Number two, help the hotel build relationships. Sometimes you need a big brother in the room. This hotel is trying to create and solicit potentially group business and future tends to come to the destination and they're selling their product, but they also need help selling the product in relationship to the destination value. Like other than what we offer you in group meeting space and blocks and room counts and food and beverage within the property, what else is there to do? What's outside the four walls? Where is it that you can go? What events can be seen? What things can be enjoyed? What attractions are there? CVB can lend its voice to that discussion. Number three, keeping the whole update, uh, the hotel updated on availability. A lot of times CVBs are aware of interest and demand to their market, but until it becomes to a certain level of reality and or fruition, they don't tend to share just those demand cycles, just that bit of demand, that that ebb and flow of people's interest or categories of associations, interests, consortia, uh, wholesalers, whatever it may be, just sharing some of that could be a missing piece to the puzzle for some hoteliers that are piecing their strategy and going, oh my gosh, that validates what we thought, or that explains why we had this inquiry, whatever it may be, sharing an active dialogue as to the demand to the to the destination is very important uh, number four be transparent um, a lot of times again unfortunately politics and preferences and validations and uh, defenses of their of their what they do cloud the ability to be as effective in helping everyone and everyone helping them be better at what they do by fogging up the transparency of the dialogue, the politics of, well, you like them better than us, or why didn't you tell us this was going on? Or, you know, we're not seeing anything from you, but you're always charging us money to get things done. Clearing that clutter away and saying, what is it that we can do that ultimately all of us are in the same goal? Set, you know, levels of business that come to our destination. There is a larger umbrella about driving general business. And if it lands in preference to one hotel versus the other, it's up to those hotels to decide how they reevaluate their their value proposition in their marketing and in their in their product to know how they can reposition their SWOT analysis to be better suited to be the first in line for that kind of demand. So transparency is important. And then finally, the, the fifth is a direct imp improvement of helping the hotelier promote their property. Sometimes there are diamonds to, sh to show off. Sometimes there is awards that hotels receive or accolades that they receive or recognition that they receive or reviews that they're at or recognitions of levels of reviews they're at that the CVB can share and saying, look at who we have in our family of hotels. This hotel that achieved this award or this they recognition for something or this notoriety. It helps everyone, but it also specifically helps that particular hotel so those are the five aspects that were into the article i thought it was a good noteworthy point to point uh, them uh, towards that article uh, as a reminder of what to always make sure you ask your cvb if they're not already offering it and to solicit them and actually chase them down to make sure that they are where i can give you instances of, of 
relationships with my clients that we've chased our CVBs down specifically for very big ticketed events that are happening into that, 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 that destination that we wanted to be a part of or knew what they were doing so that we could be better suited to balance our marketing strategy with theirs so we're not overspending on space that they're spending so we're literally competing with each other. Even that level of dialogue is something I think should be put in there. So there you have it. That is our news and show review for today as well as all the other information. Remember, you can find us on Google Play, Apple, iTunes, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Spotify, Pandora, tuned in. The list goes on 39 platforms and counting. We're even on Amazon's Alexa, Google Assistant, and Siri. Just ask to play the Hospitality Marketing Podcast, and it'll play. And no matter which one you may use, if you like the show, please rate us and leave a comment that will help others find our content. And also, we enjoy the feedback. We always answer everything that's been commented about us. And any emails you can send to Lauren at HospitalityDigitalMarketing.com. I answer each and every one of them in relationship to the podcast or live shows, uh, guaranteed. Uh, also, if this is your first time hearing us, you can subscribe to us on our show or any of the 39 platforms um, which you found us on. And we'd appreciate that you do. That lets others know that there is an audience that is ever growing. And it is. We are actually translated in 11 languages. And we're in, currently for the podcast, we're in 33 countries. For the live show, we're in 39 countries. So good news on that front. Uh, for all archives of this of previous podcast, including this one, you can go to hospitalitydigitalmarketing.com forward slash podcast. There you can find a link to all of our shows. This one is show number 301. You can get to show links uh, and notes from there. Uh, also, don't forget our live video talk show that you can join us and participate in every Friday at 1130 a.m. Eastern U.S. time called This Week in Hospitality Marketing, the live show. Ta-da! And for that, you can simply go to hospitalitydigitalmarketing.com forward slash live that you can register. So you get reminded when the show starts. We're also simulcasted on all these channels, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube, Twitter. Uh, also, we're uh, um, broadcast on our own TV channel. Yes, we are on our first and uh, it is the first and only dedicated hospitality TV channel, and that is hospitalitychannel.tv. Uh, we are also rolling out onto Apple TV. Google uh, Play, uh, Amazon uh, uh, Prime, and also um, Roku. We have a a subscription-based channel that will be on that, that will have all of our live shows on it as well. You get to play all the current live shows on demand from, so we're also on that. So we actually practice what we preach for that. So, uh, oh, as a reminder too, we do uh, from Monday through Thursday at noon, if you have an app called Clubhouse uh, on iOS or Android now, um, it is a wonderful open dialogue. We do an open forum discussion for, about hospitality marketing in our hospitality marketing club. Uh, for that, you just go to the Clubhouse app. If you don't already have it, let me know. I can send out invites if you don't already have it. It's an invitation-based platform. Um, and it's great dialogue. We have a tremendous amount of excellent people that come join us, and we literally leave the topics open. So uh, it's an open forum you can come up on stage with us. We just ask that people don't do a sales pitch. Uh, and we've had some fascinating discussions, very lively, timely, relevant discussions on a daily basis about what's going on in the world of hospitality that day and what's been hitting people's businesses and how they're solving things. So it's a fascinating conversation. So with all of that, I thank you for the privilege of your time. This is Lauren Gray, and I look forward to talking to you next week. You have been listening to This Week in Hospitality Marketing, the podcast show 301 brought to you by Hospitality Digital Marketing and in support of the HSMAI, Hospitality Sales and Marketing Association International, all right reserved copyright 2021.